Hey guys, this video is about the laboratory equipment you're going to be using. There's many pieces that you need to be familiar with. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to understand uh, the use and the name for each of the pieces of equipment you're going to be using. Okay, because you need to be familiar with, with these pieces when you're working in lab. In the beginning, you're only going to be using a few, but towards the end, you're going to be working up to using all of them and being proficient with every single piece. All right, so let's get started here. All right, the first one is a test tube. Now, the test tube has uh, a few different parts to it. You have the mouth, the opening up here, which has the beaded rim, and then you have the long part here down to a bottom round portion. Okay, now down here at the bottom and towards the top are typically where you'll find a crack. So make sure you always inspect test tubes before you use them, and also make sure there's no uh, water or any kind of other substances still in there from uh, the people that used it before you. Make sure it's nice and clean and dry. Okay, so some test tubes have a different diameter mouth or opening. Okay, so depending upon what lab you're doing. I'm going to have different test tubes for you. Most of them, you're going to be washing them and putting them back. There are not too many disposable ones, okay? We use a lot of glass ones, so you can clean them and put them back when you're done. Okay, over here, number two is a test tube rack. It holds six test tubes, and there's these six vertical dowel rods, and these dowel rods are where you place a wet test tube after you wash it um, <clears throat> when you're holding on to it. Okay, and then when you're done, you can put the test tubes on the test tube drying rack. And um, the wood ones are ideal for our class because we do use a lot of hot test tubes and we heat them up. So you do not want to put your test tube down on any kind of plastic test tube. So I prefer the wooden ones. They withstand the heat a lot better. Okay, now we have number three, the test tube brush. There's many different diameter test tube brushes depending upon which test tube you're using. I have different brushes, so you're going to choose the appropriate one that will fit in the test tube. Then we have uh, number four, the spatula. Okay, the spatula is used to pick up the substances that you're measuring out with the balance. Okay, um, which also leads us into number five, which is the scoopula. Very similar. We're going to use this one most of the time. The scoopula has a pointy end on one side and a rounded edge, edge towards the top. Okay, the pointy edge is the side that you're going to be using to pick up the sample. Now, number six, the crucible tongs. Very important. These have no rubber on them. Okay, it's just all metal. So this is where you're going to use it uh, above boiling water temperatures. You're going to be picking up very, very, very hot substances with uh, this. Um, the glassware that you're going to be picking up, it's actually going to be porcelain, and it's going to be right in the direct heat of the Bunsen burner, so you cannot use any kind of rubber coated tongs. The rubber will melt to it. So when you're working with high temperatures, crucible tongs are the tongs of choice to use. Okay, then we get to number seven, which is the rubber stopper. <clears throat> These rubber stoppers, there's many different diameters depending upon what size test tube or other type of instrument you're using. Okay. They're used to close the substance in or keep the gases in. Next is the test tube holder. The test tube holder holds your test tube. So when you're working with the Bunsen, um, you can use it to heat up the test tube. All right, then we get into the chemical splash goggles. If you wear glasses, you put the splash goggles over your glasses, OK? and it protects any kind of substance flying in if there's ever an accident or glass breaking it'll protect you so the sides here okay and the front basically give you total protection of your eyes okay number 10 gloves we have a few different labs where you'll be wearing gloves but initially we don't really have to wear them up until a certain point okay then we have forceps Okay, notice when you use these forceps, your, your forearm muscles move. So the forceps are an instrument that you're going to be using to pick up small crystals or things that you're going to be measuring or something you're going to introduce into the Bunsen burner. Then we have a Petri dish, which we use to store samples. Okay, well plate. Okay, uh, there's many different types of well plates to use like this one here has six wells we typically use a 12 well 
plate it has 12 holes and that's where we do a lot of micro reactions okay instead of using large beakers or test tubes we use them in the well plates okay where you can actually put the well plate over a piece of paper like a blank white piece of paper and you can see the chemical reaction take place then we have the wash bottle which is used to rinse down the sides of test tubes flasks beakers to put whatever substance kind of worked its way up the side back down okay micro pipettes these are disposable these are the greatest thing they're also known as transfer pipettes it's where you take the substance that you're measuring or the liquid and you use it to transfer into a test tube or into a beaker or into a graduated cylinder Okay, and then when you're done, you throw them out. You do not have to wash them out. Then we have the laboratory apron. You always wear these in the labs, especially when we're working with any kind of solutions because the solutions can ruin your clothes or your skin. So you want to wear this to protect yourself, especially from boiling water. Okay, if it does spill on you, it's just going to spill on the rubber apron and go to the floor. It's very important to wear that. Okay, uh, the ring stand is a iron uh, vertical pole where you can attach equipment to, okay? And it has a heavy metal base to support um, it. Then we get into the wire gauze, okay? The wire gauze is actually um, used to sit a beaker on above the Bunsen burner. So the wire gauze is like a little shelf you're gonna put your beaker on, okay? And the white portion here is porcelain which deflects the Bunsen burner flame to keep the glass of the beaker from cracking. Okay, iron ring are these three different size rings. Okay, these go on your ring stand. You clamp them on and you can adjust them however high or low you want them. And this is where you'd put your wire gauze right on this iron ring. Then you move over to the clay triangle. The clay triangle is used to go directly on the iron ring like the wire gauze. But notice there's a triangle here. This is to allow the flame to go right in between the three sides to allow whatever you're sitting on it to get the exact amount of heat directly off the Bunsen burner. So it's an opening. So this is like a shelf, an open shelf to allow the heat to directly uh, penetrate whatever instrument you're heating up. Okay, and we'll talk about a few of those in a minute. Okay. 21 is your evaporating dish. This would sit on the clay triangle, okay, because you want it to get really hot. It's porcelain. It can get very, very hot. So it's called an evaporating dish because whatever substance you have in there, whatever liquid will evaporate. All right, number 22 is the mortar and pestle. Okay, this mortar and pestle is used for taking crystals, crushing them, and grinding them into a fine powder. When you're done with them, be very careful to wash them out and put them back. Okay, they are very heavy. You don't want to drop them on your foot. It'll break your toe. So be very careful with these when you're using them. Okay, always hold the pestle with a tight grip and push down. Don't smack it, smash the crystal because it'll bounce up in your face. Just slowly crush and twist the pestle into the crystal to crush it. Okay, then grind in a circular motion to uh, make it into a fine powder. Okay, crucible and covers, um, we only use this very rarely on occasion. It's basically like an evaporating dish with a lid, okay? But if we do use it, they're very hard to use, um, so you have to be very careful, and I'll explain that a little more the day we use it. Okay, pneumatic trough. What pneumatic trough is, it's a container that holds water. Over here is an overflow. Okay, and here is a little shelf that's below this overflow. So what you do is you fill the container up to the top, just below the overflow. And this is a shelf that you can sit a beaker on upside down. So you take a beaker, dump it into the pneumatic trough, fill it with water, turn it upside down. And there's these holes where you can allow a gas tube to go through here and bubble into the beaker, allowing the air or the gas to displace the water holding it. Okay, so you can capture water upside down. Uh, in a beaker. Okay, now the burette clamp. This is towards the end of the chemistry class where we'll be using these. Okay, burette clamp is a special clamp where you can take a tube, okay, called a burette, and it's going to sit vertically, just like how I'm going right now, up and down in these two little um, rubber uh, bumpers. Okay, now there's something called utility clamp. Utility clamp goes on the ring stand, just like the burette and the iron ring. And you could put whatever you need to put in here, okay? 
So this is something that will be used down the road. So if you have a tube that's got to be on a 35 degree angle, 65 degree angle, this little wing nut here can be adjusted to accommodate holding that glass tube. Okay, here's the Bunsen burner. The Bunsen burner has got a few different parts. It's got the base here. It's got the tube, the inlet to the nipple right here. Then it's got an adjustable collar right here. There's a little black vertical uh, opening. This can open and close. You can adjust how much air goes in there. Then you have the barrel. Okay, This barrel uh, leads up to the mouth where the flame comes out. There's different types of Bunsen burners, but this one specifically, uh, the barrel will not turn, but on the ones that we do use, the barrel will turn to open up the vent to allow air to make a perfect flame. This is a very good flame right here. If your flame does not look like this, then you have a problem with the gas to air mixture ratio. All right, then we have the triple beam balance, which we don't really use too much. We use digital balance. Uh, it's called the triple beam balance because it has three beams. Okay, in the back, it's got the 10s. In the middle, it's got the 100s. And in the front, it's got the 1s. So this can measure, say, 355 grams, okay? So you have to um, consider this type of balance uh, to be very important. And there's also a little adjustment knob right here on the left that allows you to get a fine, accurate measurement right here where the white line meets the zero. Okay, graduated cylinder, as uh, it says, it's a cylinder with graduations to measure. Okay, there's a 10 amount and a 100 amount. So if you're measuring anything less than 10, use a 10. If you're measuring anything less than 100, use the 100. And always hold at eye level. So what you want to do is you want to hold two fingers at the top, let it swing down to make sure the gravity pulls it down, and you read from the meniscus. The meniscus is the bottom of the curvature of the liquid, and you you find the line that's closest to it and you measure it right there with eye level. I actually close my left eye when I look at it, when I hold up two fingers above my head to get a good view. Okay, funnel. Self-explanatory. It's put a, a liquid into a small opening. Okay, hot plate. Okay, it's like a little uh, electric stove. Okay. Watch glass. There's uh, small ones and large ones. Basically, it's like a giant glass contact lens. And this is like to use to put over a beaker or a, an evaporating dish to watch what's going on inside or to keep things from popping out. Okay, beakers. There's many different sizes. All right. <clears throat> um, they have a, you know, they're cylindrical in shape. Um, they can be inverted. So you have uh, zero to 150 on the bottom for measuring gases, and then you have 0 to 200 for measuring liquids. So this is for inverting, and this is for right side up. Okay, you would invert it for measuring gases, like using the pneumatic trough. Okay, Erlenmeyer flask. This is a conical shaped flask, and what this is specifically used for is something called titrations. It's for swirling. So you cannot swirl with a beaker. You can swirl with an Erlenmeyer flask. The liquid will not come out. You have to really swirl hard for it to come out, but it's not going to come out under ordinary use. Okay, then we have a thermometer. Okay, self-explanatory. We uh, all know what that is. And then the burette. The burette sits in a burette clamp. It's like a measuring device. At the bottom, there's a little valve called the stopcock, and you open it up, and you can count how many mLs of this liquid comes out towards the bottom. It's a very accurate measuring device. All right, then we have a pinch clamp, which is a, a clamp that goes over a gas tube to allow gas to flow at a high rate, a slow rate, or no rate. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to be using, not on, not on your list, but one is the laboratory balance. Okay. Down here, you, you see the LCD uh, screen. It's in grams. Make sure when you use your balance, it's in grams. Okay. And you always calibrate it. It should always say zero when you're going to use it. If it's like 0 0.0001, that's fine. Just hit tear again, and you should get the actual uh, balance to reset. Then we have one of the most important things that we're going to be using, but it's a weigh boat. They come in all different sizes, and these are disposable. What you do is you put it on the balance, you hit tear, and you put the substance that you're looking to measure in. Then you can pick the weigh boat out, and you can fold it from corner to corner, and you make a little funnel out of it. Okay, so these can turn into funnels when you fold from corner to corner. And here you go. The last two are way paper, which is like the way boat. Okay. And it goes on the balance and you tear it. And the last thing is your beaker tongs. Okay. These are for warm or cold beakers to pick up. They have the rubber on it. So do not pick up anything hot with these. If you do, the rubber that is on the 
tongs will melt to whatever you're doing and you'll end up uh, you know causing the 